Okay. So this is great. So we're talking environmental portraits. You know, you can immediately look at this and place this person kind of in their profession. So this is nice, but I'm kind of missing the context of like where they are because of the way that this has been lit. So if this person is working in their workshop, to me, it might be a little more interesting if I could see some of the other elements of that workshop behind him to really fit this into a category that I would consider environmental. Uh, you have a pretty strong shadow that's happening here. I can talk from over here. Do you need to follow me around for Zoom? They don't need to see my face, thank God. Okay, so you see the shadow that's happening here. You know, it's a pretty strong light sort of coming across, but we're not getting really a lot of light back in there. Now, that can be a function of those glasses that he's having to wear, of course. Uh, but those are things that you want to look for. If you want to be super picky, things like, you know, these white, you know, anything dark or light's going to stand out in a portrait. You know, immediately I start recognizing things like that. So this is well done, but a little bright here, here. And again, ideally, I would like to see some of that environment where this guy is. Because if that's really in his workshop, I bet that looks amazing, sort of seeing what's back there. This could have been in the middle of a studio with a black background with the machine there is what it looks like. And I have no way to know. So kind of environmental, but it could have been expanded on a little bit more. But nicely done. Carol Hageman. Mennonite uh, girls with apples. All right, so this is nice. I, I'm kind of wondering, like, you know, what's going on with the apples here and the and the look. Uh, obviously, a lot of the Mennonites that I run into don't want to be photographed, and you know, so that could be kind of that look you're getting of like, what what are you doing? Uh, so again, for photograph this, I'm sure you were. For the rest of you, always be respectful because uh, they really generally do not like to be photographed. That being said, your portrait is wonderful, and like right here, this is the portrait. What keeps me from enjoying, especially like that face and the way that she's looking at her is this massive white area that you have here and down in this area and a massive out of focus element that's here, which is like the front seat or something. This is your portrait. I would have cropped at least all that out of it because my eye is going to be drawn to that way more than it's being drawn into the faces. And that's Amazing. Show's over, folks. Um, so, like, this is the amazing part of this portrait. And that's, like, really cool. But this part here, that's just not needed for this at all. Yeah. The element of the seat and everything be worth keeping. If this were darkened down. Yeah. I agree. So if you could like wait another five seconds if this thing's moving and maybe a tree's back there or you know, something to fill in this space that's here. So yes, this is kind of nice, but I can still kind of gather from this and the way that they're setting kind of where they are. I'm gonna assume that's kind of what what they're in. And even if you crop this down across that line, you're still going to have a little bit of that element that's there. All I'm saying is that is just crazy distracting, competing against seeing them. Dan Maurer. Parking it down. Yes, going to digital. So the first one is uh, digital images now is a boy and his team. All right, so yeah, this you're really getting the uh, the sense obviously where this fella is. Uh, again, don't always feel like you have to subscribe to standard height width ratios. The story is here, and all of his friends. This is really bright down through here. So again, I would try to darken this area and a crop across that to make this more of a panoramic type image would make this incredibly stronger. Taking out the top part of those trees still tell the complete story, but would place more emphasis right here. Yeah. 
Yeah, but you still have, I mean, even if you drop that projector down, that's still way brighter than what we're seeing up here. It's but that it, it's not radically different than the screen image anyway. Yeah. So and that, now it's still crop it, yeah. even if it yeah. was brighter or darker. I'm just messing with you. You're fine. Sure. Yeah, absolutely. Do you guys need to make an adjustment? Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Then let's say, for example, you want to print as a 11 by 14, 16 by 20. Print as a 16 by 20. Guess what's really inexpensive? Matting. So cut the mat to fit how you want it to look. And we used to do that for print competition all the time. If you go back to the old days, uh, the standard for PPA and Virginia PPA and everything was actually 16 by 20s. So we had to print physical 16 by 20 prints and physically mount them. Okay, that's the only thing that we could submit. So we would often do that. I would print a 16 by 20 and do, do a mat overlay on top of that where that mat could be cut just like that window over top of it might be like that. That's the only part of that image I wanted to see. So that's the way you can kind of cheat around that without having to resort to where's the lab that can print me a six by 34, <laughs> right? Because I've been, even with my client work, I've been known to print wacky sizes because I wanted to fit the image. I hate that I only have a choice of eight by 10, 11 by 14, 16 by 20 or whatever. That drives me insane, always has. Uh, so I will get it and cut it down myself or do matting or, you know, we have a custom framework we work with uh, and she knows, you know, hey, it could be, <laughs> if I put something up there wacky, it's probably, that's probably the way I want it. Good question. All right, Ed, are we good guys? Yeah. Yes. Ed Hageman. Appalachia fiddling. Oh, awesome. Hey, who didn't just smile a little bit when they saw this? <laughs> you know, like this is really cool. When you get that kind of expression right there, you know, that's going to draw you kind of into an image right off the bat. You can immediately uh, feel a story. Now, in real competition, we never compare one image to another. For the purpose of education, when I'm in this arena, I may compare one image to another. In real competition, we never do that. Each image is judged on its own merits. Okay, we all good on that. See the difference of this in our first print, the guy with the grinder. You see how you see all these elements in the background, which subtly kind of lend to the story of this guy of like where he is. That's kind of what I was referencing for that first image, just as a reference for you. Uh, so this kind of draws me in. And, you know, it's a little bright up here, but man, he's got that bright white beard uh, and that look, and you can really be drawn into the story. The only thing that's really goofy about this, I'm not sure what's going on here. And you're probably going to get nailed for whatever has been done in that location there. I'm not sure if that's some sort of distortion or stretching or whatever it is, but it's something really bizarre. It looks like it's happening right in that section. So be careful of those things. Susan yes. Jaffer Reed. <laughs> Aspiring songwriter. All right, so I really enjoyed the intensity of this guy's look at the camera. So this is nice. You get, again, a sense of elements of the things behind him. So you get an idea that this is probably like how this guy is and how he's creating uh, his music. Uh, this lends itself a little bit to the Amish girls, where now we have a bright white section like on this side. So again, you want the emphasis to be right here and on this. And this is a very clean image. So this was well shot uh, of an image to capture him there. Somebody may say, well, that's where he sits. Well, yeah, that may be where he sits, but it may not be the best image for competition. And if I could magically crop this along here or scoot him in a little bit closer so that doesn't even have to be in the image, that'd be a, such a stronger image because all of this is competing against seeing his face, and that's a really cool expression in pose. Ava Reeves. At Mount Edna. Nice. Uh, this is great. 
clean, simple, straightforward, you know, kind of like a national geo kind of an image here of this guy hanging out with his uh, friendly goat. So this is nice. You sort of see the background to see that he's not in a studio. He's probably in his element of where he is. Uh, nicely done. Perry Matthews. Uh, barbecue man. All right. This is one of those images that's interesting, but it's so grainy and such lacking in blacks and things like this. In a professional arena of judging, you're probably going to get hammered for those things. Uh, this does sort of tell a story. You can sort of get into this, but there's so much motion of elements here, motion in the hands, blacks with not a lot of detail. Technically, this is an image that just wouldn't do well. It does tell a story, does fit your uh, theme. Uh, but you'd sort of get nailed on those sort of things. Sashi Iyer, barber. All right, so this is nice. Again, you sort of have to be careful. This is a, a great image. You sort of get a sense of where he is within his element in doing this. But unfortunately, your guy in the front is way bigger and out of focus and bright compared to here. So what you're telling me in the title is you want me to focus on this guy because that's the name that you gave me, but you have a much larger subject in the front that's out of focus. This is going to keep drawing my eye back down to that. Michael Fleetwood. Beach girl. Cute. So this is one of those that's kind of like we, we see a lot of these coming across. It's kind of like a vacation photo almost. So it's hard to tell if this was just a snap or something that was arranged. You know, when you have little kids, what are, what's cute? You know, face and all that sort of thing. Ideally for me as a portrait person, I would like to see a little bit more of like that expression. And then we're seeing so much of this and so much of this at the background. It's another one of those that would probably be kind of an ideal candidate for doing something a little more panoramic uh, to lend itself a little more interest to your subject. Pat Davis, beauty and her burden. Yeah, I do not want that job. So again, this is nice because we get a sense of like where this person must be. The only thing, the saturation of this is just really interesting to me. Uh, especially the orangish look that's here that isn't here. And then this just all looks like it was pushed up on the saturation into things beyond where it should have been. So I probably would dial that back because then you start getting like little kind of wacky colors that sort of happen in some of these other areas. And then there's a random splash of green that's like down here. So if you're going to be really precise about things, I would look at those. Ben Cot Santos. Concentration. What is that, man? Great concept. And you can kind of see it, but in your title, you're telling me to look at the concentration that this person has and what they're doing. But what I'm seeing is more of what they're doing, and it's harder to see the concentration in their face because it's so dark. Ideally, I would have taken a little different angle and tried to get a little bit more light on that face if possible. <laughs> now, I'm going to guess you're probably meandering around. This person's really doing what they're doing. It's not like you can probably go up and pose them, pop a flash in their face, and that sort of thing. So sometimes you kind of get what you get, um, but it doesn't mean it's always necessarily ideal for, for competition. Uh, but you're definitely on the right uh, track here as far as capturing them, what they're doing. You know, I would even have done like close-ups uh, even, and you still could have even told that story with that and perhaps been able to brighten that face a little bit more without really sort of throwing all that out. Kemp Davis, Cuban tobacco farmer. <clears throat> So something interesting is going on in the colors here in that face. Again, I don't know if this is a saturation issue or, or what's going on there. Uh, 
nice having that direction of light sort of coming in and hitting these other elements behind, but we have no detail back there to really be able to see what's happening. And then you're getting that really bright ear on the side. So if you're gonna do some controlled lighting uh, this way, you can scrim that down so that lighting is not hitting across that or do that in sort of post-production because you have this really nice profile of this, the hand here, but then you've got like this weird line of that light hitting ears. And you know, as us guys get older, we got those things popping out, right? Uh, so just be aware of that. Susan Van Manen, done. Yeah, that looks like a, a long day there. So, you know, you can almost feel that in her face uh, and the fact her friends are kind of hanging out over here. So this does fit the, the category pretty well. Uh, yes, it's kind of really bright around this area, but so is she. Her clothing's bright, the legs are bright, her face. I really get a sense uh, that this has really been a long day for her and she's done. So as far as, you know, the PPA has our, um, our tagline for a while, the world's great storytellers. And this, I think, would fit that quite well. Hmm. Yo ring. End of a long journey. This is going to be somewhere in the middle for me. Uh, this is pretty interesting, but it's almost like they're a little startled. And they're kind of like wondering what's going on because they're all looking. So I don't know if you like yelled something obscene to them or, you know, what you did. Like this guy's like, hey, what's up? Um, so this is interesting. You're kind of on it, but it seemed a little static to me because of the what they're doing. And with the sunglasses on, not being able to see their face or read into the story, it's a little harder to get into this story than what I'd like for it to, to be. Uh, if Again, if I could see some expression it just looks very static across the entire piece michael or engagement okay they are going to love this it is not necessarily an image for competition for us because it looks like something you just walked up and sort of grabbed us where they are They'd be super happy if they just got engaged at that spot and it was like a surprise for a buddy and somebody threw their camera up and just like grabbed a shot of that. That's what I kind of what I would expect to see this. Uh, if you're doing this kind of an art arena for environmental portraits, you know, you probably would use a longer lens, make this a little more out of focus in the background, be a little more refined kind of on the posing uh, because you're getting such harsh shadows, sort of the turn of the face. It looks like a grab photo and not really a crafted portrait, if that makes mm. sense. Paul Bickford, enjoying the sunny day. Mm. So this is cute and kind of has the elements almost of like a commercial shoot. You know, if you're, you're going to do this for like clothing brand or you know, something like that. That's the feel that this image gives me. And that's nice. But I'm telling you, it looks like that girl's eyes are closed. So if that's the case, which is what it really looks like, uh, you would need to choose a different image. Uh, and also kind of, you know, hand placement, the other arms missing. You know, if this is supposed to be like her daughter or something, have a connection between the two of them. So that right hand rather than like, barely seeing it there, just rest it up like on the daughter, just make this a little more comfortable here. You know, those are just kind of refinements. And then the other kind of odd thing, once you see it, you can't unsee it, is just how weirdly straight that leg is. And it doesn't look like there's even a foot. It just looks like this leg is just extending down into the ground, right? Oh, come on. So you just have to, I know, now you see it, don't you? You can't unsee that. Once you see it, you're like, ah, oh. And I'm taking images like that. And once somebody points it out, I'm like, dag on it, man. And that you just can't fix afterwards without a lot of, you know, pulling a sh another shot. But this goes into posing of women. And we've talked about this quite a bit before. You're still enjoying that. You guys can't control yourself. Um, <laughs> you, uh, uh, Photoshop. 
Oh yeah, yeah. Just uh, content aware, a new foot in there. That'll be in next year's uh, next year's uh, program. So, and again, then you get this really super bright stretch that's going underneath there. Again, if there were a commercial image, you definitely would want to tone that down. So, are you in the right direction? Absolutely. It, you, you just need those kind of refinements to make this image work. Curry Austin winner, Fl flamenco guitarist. Hmm. Yeah, and that really looks like he's playing. Um, yeah, you can you kind of tell. Take care of hot spots that you come across there. Yes, I know it's naturally happening, but it's super bright. It's going to draw your eye there. Uh, it's good. I would also just kind of liven up those eyes a little bit, you know, if you're doing this, you know, digitally and doing, doing work on this. Uh, but musicians definitely look different when they're playing than when they just have them sitting there holding their instruments. Uh, if you're new to photography or photographing artists, uh, we had a young boy with a cello, was it, right? Uh, yeah. And him sitting and holding the cello <laughs> looked so awkward and bizarre. <laughs> as soon as we had him start playing, it was incredible. His whole face changed, his hands, everything about it changes. All artists seem to be that way. Uh, so good to catch that, just hand placement and all, and kind of his face makes me think he really was doing something. Uh, but that's an interesting, love the cut, different colors and things that are in there. Uh, so take care of that and nicely done. Terry Troxel, haircut at home. Looks like she's either nervous or maybe got an ear on that one. So it's funny, you know, and, and I, you know, I joke about something like that, but as a judge, that's what I'm looking at when, because I have a title and a second to look at that image and start weaving that story, right? And do I want to buy into that story or not? You know, she looks like she's a little, a little pain there. The other thing is in this, which may be tonight's theme, because I'm seeing it a lot, is these super bright areas back here, which aren't contributing to the portrait. This was totally within your control to change this by shifting your camera position over a little bit and shooting into those cabinets and not into that window. Heidi Nunnally, happy face. So this is nice. Again, you, technical quality is kind of missing on this. You're getting, you know, highlights here, which really have no detail in them. And that's super, super grainy. And you're getting that nice haloing all the way around these areas. Weird things happening here. So this would be, uh, you know, weird stuff happening in there. All that technically is just going to kill you for competition. Martin Evans. His eyes have seen. Nice. Again, so this is one of those. I have to start weaving my own story sort of based on that. Uh, but this guy definitely looks like he's in his element. You know, cigarettes here. I don't know what's in the cup uh, that may make him look that way. Just be careful. You know, you get these little elements down here that are kind of bright. You know, you could probably cut. Somebody hadn't heard me lecture before, have you? Uh, so just trim that just a little bit. You don't need that area. And it's going to keep me up here in that face because this is fantastic. The hand there, great. I would have slid his glass back probably with a ruler. I wouldn't have touched that glass. Um, I would have slid all that back maybe a little bit. Uh, but that's a really cool image. Harry Lou. In the bakery. Nice. Yeah, and he looks like a happy guy, man. You know something good's coming out of there. So, you know, this is one of those is great. You get that kind of expression. This is simple, straightforward. You can tell where he is. Not crazy about that kind of yellowish cast that he has to his face. Um, and ideally would want a little more light sort of in there to really kind of bring out those eyes. If I was going to be like super picky. Because oh, everything yeah. else is so bright that it gets dark, 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 Listen. all the way to the darkest spot is around where his eyes are, which is what we want to see. <laughs> <laughs> I was really being nice and not saying anything since we have cookies in the back. Mm -hmm. uh, let's Jerry Posano, indigenous. Nice. Like so yeah, she, she kind of looks like she's up to up to something, does she not? I mean, kind of so you immediately thing. look at this and you start kind of again, kind of weaving those yeah. stories. Uh, again, yeah. we have these like the bright picture, spots though. are back here, but luckily Bottom. this one isn't the baker huge to compete that much. It? Uh, but it is pretty this bright, is like a, a along there. Uh, but this is interesting. 
be no, careful. I can't quite not. tell. That it looks like that's probably room push. light there. Uh, but do watch if you're pushing it too much. In the bank room, it changes. Huh? You've got a yeah. really strong yeah. vignette or something happening just around this. And just kind of a fast-paced guy. Leo Vainberg. It's a quick crash. Oh, yeah. 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 Somebody brought some cheese. He's looking at, oh, shit, damn it. A little hard to tell what's going on with some of the colors and the, you know, that are happening sort of throughout this thing. It looks like something's a little wacky off. I don't know if you bumped up saturation or it's high ISO or something like that or a combination of both. Uh, I do like this. This is telling a story. You probably don't even need some of that. You could probably even go in a little bit closer because this part of it here, that's what's cool. Like this right in there. That's awesome. And you still see just enough behind them to really believe that they're there. Linda Schmiel, love my job. Yeah. yeah. He does look like he loves it. Look at like a happy job where it's like Friday at five. He's ready, ready to bolt, right? So, uh, again, we've got these really bright areas. I probably would have changed a little different of an angle. Just make it maybe a little more interesting. So, to me, it looks like another one of those grab kind of photos rather than a crafted portrait. Like it was quitting time and he's like, I'm out of here. And you're like, stop, man. All right, now you can go. Uh, because he has so many elements behind him that you probably could have chosen a really cool angle with a longer lens to sort of incorporate that uh, elements uh, of the environment behind him sort of into that rather than just like him being so dominant and you end up with these big bright areas up here. Marianne Barnhart, making Panama hats. Nice. Yeah, man, she's probably done that her entire life, you know, is a, is a story that hits me when I look at that, right? And you can believe that, you know, you see the hands and the face and the weathering that's there. Uh, so that in good choice for choosing that kind of an angle to put that the profession sort of into it first, which leads you right up there to her. So nicely done. Carol Annis, my friend. <laughs> Yeah, this is cute. Again, a little bit more of a grab looking photo. You know, your story is definitely like right here. You don't need this to still tell that story. Jay Danny, navigating the Nile. Nice. Yeah, so this is really cool. So you see the way that you've got that little bit of light that's sort of coming across right there. And then you see all the texture of everything else that's happening, uh, even though the kangaroo here on the end, all these little elements. So my eye starts looking around all these little things here and the nice light that's back there, but it's not white back there. It's not so blasting that it's competing against him. And the way he's placed there and framed at the top and the bottom is really well done. That's a nice portrait. And Fulcher. Clean, clean air portrait. Clean? Clean. Clean. I'm like, I'm lame. <laughs> yeah, this is nice. And again, you sort of get the, the sense this is, this is what she does. Uh, so this is nice. It's, you know, a little, getting off a little on the, the lacking of detail sort of back here. You know, this is kind of tough when you're out in the blasting sun as it, you apparently are here with getting this. Again, if I could have her... If you have the ability to, you're not just photographing while she's working. If she were looking even up a little bit at the top to really see the eyes of that into it, it would have changed how this portrait looks uh, completely. Parks Roundtree. Relaxing. <laughs> really? <laughs> which, which part of this am I supposed to judge, guys? Uh, <laughs> the, uh, the, the form here on the bike or uh, all right? You know, so this is one of those things, you know, it does look like it was just kind of like, hey, you know, I'm working out here and somebody grabbed, you know, this photo because, you know, it's kind of hard to kind of figure out what's going. And I really can't read the expression of this is like, I'm glad I'm almost done or, hey, take this for a fall off. 
I, you know, I don't know. We'd have to talk to this guy if you can find him and see uh, and, <laughs> and see how he was he was doing here uh, on on this contraption. And it's <laughs> yeah, times are tough, aren't they? It's, uh, the model feed is you know. Uh, plus, it's so bright of a color that's back here. But the detail here, like this is what's cool. This face, the arms that are in this, and like all that. So I think it's just not the right element to do this shot. If you had this model out in a location where they were really doing this, I think it would really be an engaging. I think it's, you know, we used to have a term we use among judges, and you guys will just have to forgive me. Are we really zooming? Yes. Sorry, sorry, kids at home. The subject failure. Sometimes the subject just isn't there for the portrait for what you need for competition. This does not have that. Congratulations. <laughs> you may have a future. So the look of this and everything is great. It's just like, why is he at that spot? I can't get into the story. I don't know why he's there. But if you put him out somewhere, I think this would totally change how that comes across. Shockingly, that's Ling Whitworth. That is weird. Never would have guessed. Rock on. <laughs> okay, this just scares me. Um, <laughs> not as scary as the creepy clowns that we had a couple of years ago. I still have nightmares about those. You guys, old guys, you, you know what I'm talking about. Um, but sometimes, they, well, I was just talking about subjects, right? <laughs> uh, this is one that's just, he has such a disturbing look that that doesn't say rock on to me. That looks like somebody's head just exploded with rock or something, <laughs> and, and he saw it. And his face is like so white there, and his hands are so yellow. Uh, you know, all that's just kind of off for me. So I would probably go through other images maybe you took of this and find one that's a little more engaging for the viewer that was not there and maybe heard how incredibly this guy played. Uh, and that can happen sometimes. You're, and we've gone to you know events and photographed uh, musicians, especially. There are some really weird things they do in between really good shots that you get, right? The distortions of their face. We had one person; their tongue was out like a lot. Uh, I've done, <laughs> especially athletes. Man, if you ever photograph athletes, man, I can't tell you how many I have photographed, and their tongues are out to one side. It's like some kind of concentration thing that gets kind of weird. I'll come over here and harass you guys too. <laughs> um, it's just really odd. So things like this, you do have to get multiple shots of this and then look for that gem that's in between all of these. Karen Davis, roots run deep. Nice. So again, this guy can totally believe this is his element. The clothing fits, his expression fits. You know, you can tell immediately like what he's doing. So this totally fits into the uh, definition for environmental portraits and just the right degree of light, like on his face and everything. So nicely done. Rebecca Perry, sitting with number 44. <laughs> nice. But again, I don't, this kind of looks like she sat down and you took it. Uh, I can't like, see, like, see my new direction. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I don't know what the story is like between the two of them. So it kind of so looks, like, looks like maybe this is a, you know, favorite. A favorite. And she and sat, sat down and take, take, take my picture. So, so it's, it's not, not as in our, our culture world, world looking for an engine story reading. It's hard for me to kind of kind weave of around, around this. this. It just looks, looks like she popped like down the photo. Dave Johnson. Spring chores. All right. So we're, so we're right off the, right bat, off the bat. This would be, this would be ditch, ditch for photo, photo quality. quality. Uh, uh, just, just because, because it seems, seems like, like it's just really out of focus. There's nothing that's like completely sharp on this. Sharp on this. Uh, and then you've got uh, this you've furry, got this furry blasting, blasting, blasting light that's coming across, across with incredibly hard shadows, shadows with, with no details, details in their faces. faces. So, just so just technically this would not fly for competition. This can be solved by photographing earlier in the day or later in the day or changing locations. Penny Haller, uh, Tan Tanzanian girl. Yeah, this this is great. Uh, you know, this again fits in the definition. You know, somebody's like, "Oh, what about that bar there?" Well, it's you know, a lot of the countries are like that, right? Uh, where that's how it is. So I'm not going to fault the maker for this uh, because they would barely fit in there. But the tone and texture and story that's in that, and also to take that a step further. Look at the harshness, the apparent harshness of this lifestyle of this individual 
and their hands and their face, but yet you have like this beautifully designed tapestry, you know, so curtain right, and the yeah, rose that's there. That's a really, so that's a really nice visual contrast, contrast between, between the two as well. As well. So this so is, really, this is well really well done. Harold Lanham, the captain in his natural habitat. <laughs> Captain Mike. <laughs> All right. So this is uh this is interesting, but it's so over the top with that zoom effect of this. And I can't tell if I didn't know who that was, I wouldn't know who that was. <laughs> right. Um uh, I can't see him, I can't understand what he's doing, and that could have been taken anywhere. So it's just Unfortunately, it doesn't fit for me into the, the category very well uh, for what we're after this month. John Schickler. Oh, I'll be curious to know what Captain Mike thinks about it. The Weavers play it. All right. So here you've, it looks like you've probably had to shoot an extremely high ISO uh, because you have like crazy amount of green. It's not particularly sharp in any particular area of this. Uh, so sometimes you are kind of limited by that. You can't use flash or supplemental lighting or whatever, and that's kind of what you get. Um, so that's going to be dicey. In situations like this where my image quality may be suffering a little bit and I know it, don't make the image as big as you can make it, right? <laughs> this goes back to what we were saying before. Make that smaller and then take up matting to take up the rest of it. So I would not make that what we can call a full bleed image. It's like in the old days, I would never have made that a 16 by 20. I may have made it an eight by 10 on a 16 by 20 background. Because then you're not gonna see that lack of quality as much uh, in that particular image. But as far as the story goes, outstanding. Wiley Wander, teeny marine. Go Navy. <laughs> All right. So this is cute. Parents would love it. But there's practically no light in her eyes at all. So from a portrait standpoint, this we're really, really lacking. And I want to see the sparkle of her eyes as a new mom and at this location to sort of bring into the story. Also, probably a little more vignetting to darken this down a little bit more to help bring them out. And also, you could have brought that a little bit closer to sort of see the Marine Corps emblem and a little bit closer to them as well. So longer lens, a little different angle, light in the eyes. They're in the right direction. You need to keep moving forward with that. And tell them to go Navy. <laughs> Cindy Walker, traveling home from warship. <laughs> nice this is this is this is cool it's also kind of wacky like these modern glasses <laughs> you know with all of this sort of going on uh that looks more old old school so this is great i mean i love the feet like in the air so this is a great sort of capture this part almost looks like a norman rockwellish uh, feel to it you know the whole thing kind of does uh the only thing I will say about this, I am not wild about that outstanding bright white mat around it because my eye is getting blasted by that. Anybody else? I mean, can you guys see that now? Like this right here, that's the story. And that's incredible. This is such a cool image. Really enjoy that. But yeah, you just choose. You know, I don't, I'm not against the matting and the cropping is fantastic. This is the panoramic thing I was talking about earlier on some of the other prints. So this is, this is, this is a dream right here. This is amazing. These are the kind of images we want to see. It tells a story. It's fun. Then you start looking at details and the details of the horse actually in motion and moving. Uh, the, them looking over, you know, all that's really good. I can wave a magic wand and maybe see a little bit more of that shadow back there. This is cut a little close on this. That would be great. I'm not going to penalize you for not having it, uh, but that'd be a nice addition to this. Uh, but that's just so blasting white. It just draws me away. So this needs to be a super dark tone from somewhere in your image to keep me here. That's the story. But that's just way over the top. 
too bright because that doesn't exist anywhere in here. Even these shirts aren't that tone. Those are way different a tone than what that, this is like crazy blasting white. And Tony Johnson, trimming the wooded area. This is with the model fees around here, guys. This is uh, <laughs> this is this is crazy. Uh, all right. So this is interesting. So this person is out in their element. You can sort of see, but it's a little hard to kind of read the expression of whether they're exhausted, being forced to stand there for no pay, or what they're doing <laughs> for for this particular image. Uh, the other part of it is it's so dark back in these dark areas behind it, uh, and it looks like almost like a fill flash or something is kind of hitting clothing here. So, you know, it's just, you know, it's doesn't blend well for me on what's going on. This is one of those, that if you photograph this at like 5.30 in the morning, you know, nowadays, or at, you know, 7.30 at night, when you had nice, beautiful lighting, this would look completely different. The lighting on this would look much nicer. You're not going to have that crazy deep, dark shadows behind there. So I think this could have been solved by a different time of day. Bill Whitworth, obviously. <laughs> Working curious, hard. <laughs> be curious if it were a different name. <laughs> um, so, so this is interesting. You know, and, and once I see the detail of like this sitting over here, you know, he's just wondered, you know, he has uh, afternoon juice there and now he's out. Um, you know, th this is cool. You know, so you've sort of captured this guy and his element. Again, be careful when you're shooting these because you're getting really blocked up of what's going on. Like, I can't see any detail, like, at all, like, what's up into there. So I don't know if you have vignetted and darkened that down, you know, after or something like that. Try not to lose all of your detail that in those blacks. Partly an artifact of the fact that the um, projector is turned down so low. The image on the okay. screen has more Looks detail. Looks better. Okay, excellent. So that is Ted Dracuda, and that's the last of our assigned subjects. Man, look at those hands. You know that guy's work. Be prepared, the light's going on. So now we have open submissions. Two prints in this category. The first print is Danny Finney with his sax and sculpture. <laughs> Give me a second to call up the digital. Yeah. Okay, so props for getting creative uh, on trying to do something, but you have to be careful when you do that. Uh, so be it long exposure, moving the camera, you know, those kinds of things can create wacky things along the way that sometimes aren't the most flattering. Uh, you know, we get these streaks of light that's sort of coming across the eyeball here and this half kind of lighting segment that's splitting his face across there. So I don't mind you going outside the box, playing and getting creative, but you kind of have to be mindful of those things uh, of where they're coming across someone's face. So they can come across a little disturbing sometimes when you do that. This is a little more subtle than that, but still it doesn't move me to engage what the subject is involved with. So, uh, you know, I applaud you for doing some wacky uh, creative placement there. And this is also an interesting element to have up in the side here. You've got this big eyeball watching this guy play, right? Uh, so it is interesting done how the arrangement is. Just be careful when you go outside the box and do those things. You're not kind of like making weird things happen across the face. Dan Maurer. It's up to the goalie. Is the largest print of actual print I've seen in a while. So good for whoever put this in. 
Yeah. All right. So just to sort of point something out, you know, I was talking about the bright white mat on the other image. Again, in competition, we never compare images. But you see how this white isn't nearly as offensive because we have so much bright white in the jerseys and it shows up throughout here. And it's not that far of a difference between the white in here and here for you kids at home, the white there and the white that you don't see. So this is one of those things in sports, you're kind of capturing literally that split second. The ball's like in a perfect position. Uh, so the, as far as a sports shot, lots of action. They're airborne, feet are off the ground. I don't see anything kind of wacky immediately jumping out. It just, you know, and you can read it in the story immediately. Yeah, I love this. Bill Whitworth. Oh, and what you're seeing on your laptop. Yeah, that happens for us too. Uh, regular basis. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, definitely. Definitely. Uh, we see those with the phone. Next week. Yeah, yeah. Got to take some classes and Here's schedule messages. Ready for the. Okay, almost there. Uh, no. <laughs> oh, <laughs> <there's an audience. laughs> uh, not sure I agree with that title because it looks like they got a long way to go there. Uh, that's really, that's, that's great. You know, this would almost fit into our category for the month. Although I, I guess we're out of category now, right? This mm -hmm. is open. This is open. Uh, yeah. Great. You know, you see how you have these extreme shadows, which only add to this element of where they are. This is a great, uh, location image. Love the way that they've sort of placed them with these lines that are happening here. You know, the trail that's leading up to it. It's on a third. This is ideal positioning and placement here. Nicely done. Ben Cott Sontosh. Attempted tackle. Well, that looks brutal. Uh, again, just, you know, in sports shots, it's hard. You're not able to really control many things at all. Great sort of capturing this. Again, just be careful on your post-processing because, again, absolutely no detail tail happening in the blacks. So that is one thing for competition that we look for, that you have good tonal range across the entire file. Ling Whitworth. Uh, beach walk. All right. So beach walk immediately hits me that it's not sharp. You know, the entire image just looks like it's slightly out of focus. And I don't know if that's a function of quality and enlarging what you had originally photographed to pull this out of it. It's kind of what it looks like to me without seeing the original, but you're sort of seeing, you know, weird motion things around there. None of it's entirely kind of sharp uh, anywhere on there. As far as placement goes and all that, really interesting placement. So the, it's great. A story is there, uh, but I can't even tell like what this creature is. It looks like a miniature llama, maybe, that she's walking. Uh, <laughs> Down down the beach because we because we can't quite see the detail of it. So uh, you know you just have to be careful with those things. Susan Van Manen, and that'd be a first. I've never seen like a miniature llama on the beach before. That'd be really that'd be cool to see that. Best friends. <laughs> nice. No, you can't look at dogs, right? Not be happy. So you know just be careful because what's between friends? Somebody's elbow. <laughs> so you know. It, and again, it's one of those things like once you see it, man, it's like you can't unsee it. So when things like that to you happen, shift your angle a little to the right or a little to the left, and you could have totally eliminated that issue right there. Then post-production, you're going to try to tone down somebody's bright white arm. And thank God it's not my arm because it'd be even more white than what that is. You're out of luck. There's not a lot that you can do because it starts changing color and begins to look super weird. So um, who in here started with film? I see a show of hands of who started film. What did we do in what did we do in film days? You shot it right to begin with. <laughs> hey. So the hardest thing is teaching people sometimes to photograph it only digital only, because depending on the instructors they had, they're like, oh, we'll fix that post-production, post-production. Oh, we'll take the cord out post-production. I see that in commercial shoots a lot that I do. And I'm like, uh, I'm still old school, man. Uh, you know, you don't want to retouch a 35 millimeter negative or, you know, we shot six by seven, you know, larger negatives. You still don't want to retouch on that. It takes two seconds to go remove the cord out of the way now, right? And photograph it right. 
to save you the time in Photoshop later. These are the kind of things I look for also. Even now, it'd be kind of easy to take that out or tone it down. It'd be really easy to lean about that much and that would be gone. But other than that, your faces can't go wrong with, with puppies and dogs, right? Babies. Paul Bickford. Uh, bird on a bird on flood wall. Nice. Uh, look, nice leading line into that. Bird's nice and sharp. Excellent placement on there. Great tones. It kind of matched the tones that the bird's wearing that day. So all of that works and blends really well. Nicely done. Pat Davis by the sunflower field. So again, this sort of goes into posing and you guys that have been around me a lot know that we start talking about female and male posing. Uh, that's, that's kind of my thing. So when you have somebody that's like square onto the camera, that's generally not the most flattering, you know, especially for women, right? So this just needs a little refinement on the posing. And then you're also trying to balance some sunlight with some fill flash here, which are different colors on both sides of that. Um, I probably would have waited maybe a little longer in the day if I'd had that option and just try to work with natural warm lighting or balance your lighting uh, that you're using to be a little bit warmer or a little less noticeable than what this is. Um, eyes are also really cut off to her left side. So you're going to see more white of the eyes than what you should. It's not as flattering when you, if you guys look at me for a second up here, you see that all the white there is bad. You see a little bit more of the eyeball. That's generally Movetta, right? Carrie, uh, oh. no. Carrie Oster winner. <laughs> <laughs> hey. Catch of the day. Oh, great. So great detail, you know, across there, great expression, all that's really well done. Great framing for this as well. I don't see, you know, I was trying to look in there and see if we had any weird things happening around the edge of it and we don't. Uh, so man, that's ideal. That's spot on for what we're looking for. Really well done. That's a great image. Harold Lanham, clearing the bunker. All right. So I would ideally given a little more lead room sort of into that. It feels a little chopped right there on that edge. And I probably don't need as much here behind him. So I would have shifted this whole view over just a little bit more. And you'd have had really more of that sand sort of flying up there. Uh, so about where your bug is here coming up a little over there, uh, sort of catch him. Philip Schneider. Come sail away. <laughs> I'd like to have seen the person taking this <laughs> while they were taking it. <clears throat> That's really cool. So again, it looks like we have good detail, detail across there. Great for sort of capturing this. I don't see anything wacky in color shifts because that's, again, as a judge, that's what I'm looking for typically on shots like this. Is this sharp? And are we seeing any weird outlines of anything happening in the tones and I'm not seeing it. Uh, it's a little challenging to sort of see the division between where the water is and that sort of reflection. That's a little odd. Uh, and you've got a little bit of weird blurriness that's sort of happening in that area. So I'm not sure if something has been done post uh, in making that happen, but this is strong enough and cool enough. I'd be like, yeah, that's cool. And I'd pretty much let it go. Carol Annis. Dance like no one is watching. This is nice. And again, your subject, your most interesting person is this person that's here up front. Uh, so your eye goes there. And then you go down to this. And this person is just in a really weird position. Then you've got all these other interesting poses that are happening in and around it. So if you're sort of capturing this for the performers, it you had the ability to arrange people, I definitely would have made a different arrangement of this. If you're there just capturing a practice and you have no ability to give any direction, it is what it is, but is it good for competition, right? Sometimes it is, sometimes not. 
So for me, this is great. This would be a great subject, good positioning, like the placement. Uh, but these other elements that are back here, just sort of, I go back here and the story falls apart for me. And then you're having to deal with the giant white wall back behind them where your story is like really in here. Go ring. Egret show. Nice, dad. Great title for that. <laughs> Titles are hard. Uh, and I'm seeing detail that's in there and details on the feathers. I'm sure you're seeing even more detail on your laptop probably in that because uh, I can almost see it here, like even on that screen. So that's great. Again, what we're looking for is nice detail and all of those elements coming out. Uh, it's a little bright on your you know, branches and all that there. Ideally, that would be toned down a little bit, especially over on this side. Uh, this is your story. So make sure you keep it in there and get rid of those kind of things to be you're being super picky. Parks round tree. Fired answer. Nice. Uh, again, probably high SO, but you know, it's not falling apart there on the face too much. Again, that's one of those images. I probably wouldn't make it super big, depending on your original and how the comparison is of what I'm seeing. Uh, but nice capturing that and everything about that. Nicely done. Michael Lore. Fresh from Barber. Yeah, this is great. Just be careful on these, you know kind of bright spots that are like in and across there. Uh, I would probably, you know, there's there's photojournalism, right? Which is sort of capturing it as it is, and that's how it is, right? You're not going to change it. So this could be a photojournalistic kind of grab, and you're just kind of grabbing this guy. Um, I would say probably as a photojournalist, you would not have captured it this close this way. <laughs> so I'm going to assume you had some degree of, of sort of changing things. Uh, but this is really interesting. Interesting choice of that really low angle. What we we're seeing on some of the other elements, we're lacking in our detail underneath there. Those blacks are completely blocked up here. Again, unless it's what we're seeing here. And then if I were entering this in competition, I would sort of tone this down a little bit because those eyes are crazy. And you're seeing some crazy reflections that are in there. This big, bright white area is going to take away from me sort of seeing into that uh, because that's an interesting subject and angle. That's, this is really cool. Uh, I'd like to see it even better. Michael Fleetwood, Ghost Bowl. Oh, excellent. Again, wave a magic wand. We'd love to see not just a silhouette there. You could pull out any kind of detail that's like in that. And even without that there, that's still a really cool scene. That's just even amazing that that's there. So nice positioning and placement. I would like to be standing like about right there. Heidi Nunnally, ghosts of our grandparents. That's interesting. Again, this sort of goes back to what I was just talking about with the photojournalism. You know, if you're sort of walking along and sort of capturing this, uh, these are definitely people I would not have interrupted uh, while they were doing this, if this is indeed their ancestry. Uh, even if not, if they're learning about this, you know, this is one of those things you're not going to go up like, hey, man, can move a little to you, right? That's just not going to happen, right? Uh, so as far as capturing them and capturing the story, uh, well done. Uh, again, if I could wave a magic wand, probably would have shifted my angle maybe a little bit more. But then, you know, you're not going to see like the full image of this. But your story is in, you probably come could come in still a little tighter. By eliminating some of this up in this area, you're going to concentrate in on that story even more. Pedro Cuda. Nat catcher's tightrope. <laughs> nice. Yeah, and even in motion, man, walking that tightrope. Nice detail across there. Good placement. Nice tones. Good choice for depth of field. Nicely done. Cindy Walker. Guadalupe Church. Uh, Granada, Nicaragua. So this looks super bright and really wacky on the clouds back behind. Like it's hard to tell if those were really there or not because it doesn't seem to blend well with that scene. Uh, so be careful if you did or did not do that, that you don't get so dark and it blocks up so much that we think that you did that. And then the distortion of the building, uh, you know, it looks really good this way, but it looks like the whole thing has been like compressed this way. So maybe that's me and what I'm seeing. 
Uh, but if you did do adjustments to the building to make it uh, straight up and down, make sure you don't go too far this way and compressing it because that's the feel that I have when I look at it. Leo Vainberg, His Majesty. This is just super, super grainy um, of an image. And I'm not sure if that was a technique applied on purpose, but it looks like a reproduction of a reproduction of a slide that was shot a few years ago, right? This has that <laughs> feel uh, to it. Uh, I would probably come in a little bit closer, but we're seeing so much uh, green and everything that's sort of happening in and across that. I would go back to the original of this image if you have the ability to do that and just take a close look and make sure this is the best representation of this. Ed Hageman, jockey. All right, again, no kind of the opposite of what we've been saying, no detail in the whites are there or blacks are getting kind of blocked up on that uh, and the saturation is up. So again, on this one, perhaps go back to the original as well and make sure in your post-processing of what you've done, you just haven't gone too far with your adjustments to cause that. Sashi Iyer. I like the socks though. The socks are a nice touch. <laughs> Kestrel. So here's an example too. You see how wacky this is looking down here with these splotches? So you're going to get hammered on this because this is going to jump out right off the bat. It's so wacky and nothing else is like that in the scene. Your story is definitely here. Uh, I would eliminate that like altogether if you have the ability to do it because that your, is going to kill it right out of the, right out of the gate. Carol Hageman. <clears throat> La Vita y Bella. Now, you said that beautifully. <laughs> Don't ever do that in competition. <laughs> because how many competitions have we been to <laughs> where it's been like a foreign name or like the name is like 12 words long. You don't think it's ever going to end. Uh, so you don't know the caliber of the people that are going to be reading the titles of your prints. So while it may sound fancy and sophisticated as this gentleman here, has presented the title of this, I guarantee you, you will not always get so lucky to have this at your competition. And <laughs> probably not take that up with that young lady over there. She's going to, I'll warn you, she's a hunter. So she will take you out. Be careful. <laughs> um, she, yeah, she, she, she hunts bear. So, you know, you outrun a bear. There you go. Uh, so anyway, so that's an important lesson. Just don't get too carried away. It may sound great. You may be familiar, intimately familiar with that. Uh, same with super technical names. You know, if it's like, you know, something with uh, astronomy or science or anything like that, you may know the technical name of a plant or the technical name of an animal. I would generally encourage you to stay away from those things. So while it may sound sophisticated and educated for you, you have to calibrate it for your general audience and your judges which are going to be sitting there looking at your prints, okay? So it's a very long side note there. Uh, other than that, this is nice. It's been nicely converted to, to black and white. There are nice tones across this. The only thing that sort of, you know, gets me is this big square or big triangle that's happening up here at the top where the story can still be told in closer. You guys still see around me, man? <laughs> you know, in here. Tony Johnson. Loading cork. I can honestly say I've never seen that. So that's interesting. So he seems pretty happy about it. Uh, so this, again, could sort of fit into your environmental portrait category. Uh, even though it's blasting sunlight, we still have detail. You see how in those, some of those other shots we had, it was blasting sun, but that shadow side went completely dead, right? Here, we still have that. So you're probably getting reflection off the ground, off the cork. This could be a, basically a giant reflector even because it looks like a warm tone on that side of his face. Uh, so, you know, that's actually well done. Terry Troxel, looking at me. Yeah, nice. So good placement, like these little drops down here. You know, the that just shows you the amount of detail that's like inside here. 
I would probably take those off for competition, but the fact that detail is there, that's great that you captured that. Uh, that intensity in the eyes is also pretty awesome. Uh, Going to be super picky. You know, watch out for things like this that are coming across. Consider either removing that by cropping or removing it. Martin Evans, Marshall Street Neon. All right. This is one out of my kind of arena. I have to have other judges be like, oh, yeah, look at this. This is really hard to capture because uh, I can't tell what it is. You know, so you have to look at it based on merit of an art piece. You know, is this something to be an art piece hung in a doctor's office or, you know, in a hallway or something like that? Because you can't really tell what it is if you weren't there, right? Uh, and then you've got this super blasting, you know, event that's happening here, which, you know, does that add to the rest of the story? The tones and everything of that are like super cool. But then we have it looks like this explosion up here, which to me sort of takes me out of the category of enjoying it as much as if it were only these elements down here. Penny Haller. Mer May Ellen. Um, Mer May Ellen. And I just gave you credit for that other super title. Yep. Well, man, down. Build them up, take them down. Build them up, take them down. Uh, so again, this just looks like one of those, you know, you kind of capture her when she was there. Uh, you did use, you know, a good choice in, in depth of field, but you have very flat lighting across this. So, you know, this is kind of the opposite of that we talked about before of harsh sunlight and, you know, dark shadows. This is flat, like kind of all the way across it. And uh, sort of in the portrait world, we do want to have a little bit of, uh, you know, of a highlight and shadow side to this. Uh, more than that, you really don't want to have those things coming like straight at you and posing. So that arm is coming straight out. I would have just said, hey, let's pull your arm in. And it would have totally changed like what's happening like right there. Rebecca Perry, Michaela. <laughs> Michaela's camera shy. Um, it's the only thing with this, the lighting is so specular on this. It's just just giving you these weird kind of like highlights across that. I'd like to have seen a softer light source for this and not something so harsh uh, for this uh, lady of distinguishment. <laughs> John Schickler, nature finds a way. Yeah, and the photographer found a way too to capture this scene and make it look really cool. So great uh, lines coming through here, great little center of interest down here at the bottom leads me all the way back through here and to the trees that are back there. That's a great scenic. Ann Fulcher, Petunia-verse. <laughs> Cute. So I can't really tell if these things look like they're floating in there, though. So I think your flower people may go a little nuts with not having any detail sort of connecting those into that. Uh, but the tones and color and everything, you could sort of get away with this as an art piece. Uh, but that color that's on the outside, it looks like it has a little bit of a shade of a really faint blue or something in there. Uh, I maybe would play with that tone and make sure that's the best color uh, choice for that stroke. Susan Jethro Reed, proud mama. All right, no doubt. Uh, but this looks like kind of flash on camera you know, or straight on, or the camera's up on a bracket, you're getting this, you know, our shadows that are in here. So for portraits of people, I prefer much softer lighting than this. This kind of looks like you told them to grab together and you snapped it. It's a blank wall behind them. They're flat to the camera on, or subject on the right. So all those things, it's great for capturing that moment for them. If you're looking to refine your art, uh, then those are elements I would look at. Karen Davis. Ready for winter. Man, uh, nice. So, again, be careful because you're losing detail in your highlights on that because it looks like probably blasting sun. Uh, just judging on the shadow that's back here, and you're losing this detail across the stones here. So I would take this whole thing and tone it down from what it is. But great subject, great placement, great placement in the surrounding for what it is. Uh, that's well done. Harry Lou. Shipwreck sightseer. All right. So I'm not sure what's going on here, other than you didn't take me with you when you went to shoot this. <laughs> Next time you go, let me know. I can make this better for you. Really super weird colors happening on your observer that's going out. So 
I don't, again, I don't know if that's a function of just bumping the saturation like way out of the ballpark, but if you get close and look at that, it's just blobs of really weird color happening. Uh, so while this is super cool and you could salvage that photo by taking that out of it or just removing it, because that scene and everything else about it, it's incredible. Uh, but something so wacky there, you'd get nailed for that. Wiley Wan beer. Standing by. <laughs> nice. So, uh, you know, that's great. That's just one of those things that's kind of unexpected. You know, it's taking a super ordinary object, right, or subject, and making it interesting that we haven't seen. So as judges, we want stuff like this to come across. We used to have a joke. How many little pretty princesses in pink can we see in like one competition? And you'd see them like over and over and over in the same titles and field of dreams. And I had a field of dreams and I got a PPA merit on it years ago. Uh, but everybody's like, don't ever name a title like that again. I'm like, everybody else has that title. Um, so this is just cool. Uh, it's a great black and white. It's great placement, great lines, great simple concept. This is well done. Kemp Davis, the red coat. <laughs> All right. So again, this one of those just kind of wacky mixture of lighting, really strong on this side. We are beginning to lose a little bit of detail. I'm not really sure what's happening up here. And you're getting this edge like all the way around there where there's some kind of transition of something that's happening uh, and across that shoulder. So it looks like we've been adjusting things perhaps a little too much on that side. And then the eye is who we talked about before. The eyes are like super cut to the side. If his eyes are cut that much, his head should be turning that way. And if his head were turned that way, it would make this portrait way more engaging uh, than what it is. So I think you have the foundation to have created something amazing here. If you have the opportunity to go back and work with this person again, but imagine a nice highlight and shadow in this portrait we have nice lighting coming in across this way. This gentleman's head's turned to his left and it gets progressively darker over here. How much more engaging that would look. Jerry Posano, Urban Sigil. Nice, again, kind of like one of those, you know, art pieces, you've taken something ordinary and it looks like reflections off buildings. You know, we begin to see sort of some things back in here as that reflection. So you sort of have to be careful for that when you shoot it is showing up in these areas. Uh, but nice for seeing the scene and capturing it and putting it in thirds. So as an art piece, nicely done. Perry Matthews. Does that mean it's time? I heard a magical <laughs> chime. All right, time's up, kids. Sorry. Earn symmetry. All right. Again, be careful on this. What are we missing? Detail in the blacks, right? So make sure we have that. Again, one of these scenes like this, even though it's a simple subject and you have the secondary subject back here, a different time of day with nicer lighting would have totally changed how this looks. Jay Denny, walking through memories. Dicey. That's how this is going to go across in competition. You're going to have somebody like, oh my God, that's amazing. Reminds me of fill in the blank. And they're going to run with it with a life experience that happened to them. They'll relate to that. You're going to have to have a judge fall in love with this and talk it up for it to do well. Uh, it's gutsy to put something in that's like this that you typically don't do. Some people will be like, that's great. Some people be like, well, that secondary one should be faded more. You know, the biggest thing for me is how out of focus like everything is in this scene. And there's so much bright white. And the secondary is so far away from kind of the original. So I, I like the idea of playing with something outside the box, doing something completely different. I applaud you for that. Uh, work on this technique a little bit more and then sort of find where your subject is. I don't know that this is doing you any favors. It's actually competing a lot, I think, than keeping me from what's happening there. Marianne Barnhart. What's this? We've seen that. <laughs> yeah this is you know this are, are we are we good this is okay so again looks like you know middle of the day sort of capturing that you're losing all of your highlight information sort of in that water 
And it looks like you walked up and this kid, you're like, hey, kid, get out of the way. And the kid didn't. So you like grab this photo, right? Um, and they're like, no, it's my grandbaby. Grandma over here is going to come and kick me or something. So if that's your grandchild, leave your grandchild there for scale. Uh, but this would be a great scene of that whole thing, personally, for competition, if that child were not there. Because I can't tell why the child is there. The feet are odd. The outfit I can't tell the hoods up. I can't tell the purpose of the child being there. If the child was like holding like one of the flowers that they ripped out of there and security's on the way, <laughs> I know anything like that, which would like bring me into the story of like what's happening here. Then it makes sense of why that child is there. Are you making fun of me and doing video, right? <laughs> so uh, anyway, so those are the things that, again, I'm just being honest. This is where they're going to admit it to you or not. As a judge, I can tell you that's what's going through my head when I'm looking at these images, but not all of them are going to tell you that. I'm just the only one who will tell you what's going through and what we think about and evaluate. And that's exactly it. Because this scene in a, on its own, and especially at a different time of day, would be super cool. Imagine that like morning or evening, but different lighting that's in there would be really cool.